Hey, today I'm going to show you how you can draw some cool pixel art, just like this uh, cool guy here, um, using nothing but CSS and one HTML element. So it's very simple. It's a kind of cool way to do it. I know there's lots of other ways you could draw something like this. You could use a canvas element or you could, um, you know, just put a bunch of divs on the screen or you could use an SVG. And those are all great ways to do it. Um, sometimes they're the better way to do it, but this is also fun and could be useful in certain cases. So let's get started over here with a very, very simple version of what we just saw. So this is a single div with the class name canvas. And right now it has a height of 50, a width of 50, and a box shadow property. Um, which also has 50 pixels, 50 pixels, and the color white. So the way this box shadow property works is the first value here is, it's the Y offset, I think. Um, sorry, the X offset. So that is essentially how far from the left is it gonna be drawn? So I could, you know, make this whatever I want to, and it's gonna move from right to left across the screen as I increase the value. For the second number here, it's gonna go from the top to the bottom as you increase the value. So you can see how that is kind of cool, but you might be asking yourself, like, how can I use this to actually draw a picture? Um, you know, I only have these three numbers here. And the answer to that is the box shadow property can take more than one of these entries. So let's, um, let's just add another one in a comma separated list. So we can now do 100 pixels, zero and black. And yeah, these zeros don't need pixels after them. And cool, so now I have two boxes. What if I do another one? And maybe let's move this one down a little bit. Make it red. Now we're getting somewhere. We're really starting to draw something. Um, that's really cool. And why is there no like zero, zero here? Well, the answer to that is, since these are offsets of box shadow, if I have one that's zero, zero, it's actually going to be directly under the canvas element, which is not part of our picture. And I can make that a little more obvious by putting a background color on the canvas and fixing my semicolons. So now we have the purple box here where the canvas is, and our first element is actually underneath it. And if I start to increase that, it's gonna slide out from behind the canvas. And just to make things a little simpler for ourselves, we tend to not draw the canvas at all, just make it transparent, but use our first point, maybe one unit to the right so the whole thing's visible. And another thing to notice is that all of these are positioned um, as factors of the height and the width. So if the height and the width is 50 pixels, I'm gonna go 50, 100, 150, and that's gonna draw me a nice grid across the screen. If I overlap them, you could do that. You could draw all kinds of stuff, but for nice looking pixel art, we just want these to be the same ratio here. And it doesn't have to be 50 though, it could be 10. So if I make these all 10, now we have, uh, we have nice pixels, they're just spread out now. And then if I wanted them all to be next to each other again, I would just update all these numbers like so. And now we have a smaller image. And this is great. You can draw anything just using these principles we've seen so far. 
Um, and you could draw a big image. You just have to type in every single one of these entries here. Uh, or you could use this NPM package that I wrote recently, which can translate a PNG file into a list of uh, box shadow values. And I'll show you how that works. It's, uh, it's a package published on NPM and it's a CLI tool. So you can just install it from NPM like this with the G flag, which will install it globally so that you can use the command from anywhere in your file system. And it's called CSS, or no, it's called pixel to CSS. So if you go ahead and install that, you should have the package and now you can use it just by typing in the command and we'll give it a path to a PNG file. I have a, I have a file called sonic.png in the current directory. So we use that and then there's a second parameter that's required and that is the size of the pixels you want. And so 10, that's the height and the width of our element that we're going to apply it to. What this does is it just makes sure that all of these values are in the right place. If you change the size, you have to rerun this and change this value here. But since our height and width is 10, we'll just put 10. And then you can also put in a class name because this is going to generate some CSS with a class we can apply. And if you run that, you'll get outputted directly to your console in standard output the CSS class. Uh, so this is cool. You could just go and copy and paste this, but I am going to do a little trick here and pipe it into the clipboard. In Windows, this is how you do it. In Mac and Linux, I forget what the tool is you can pipe into to get it in the clipboard, but I just look that up and I'm sure there's a way to do it. In Windows, just do that. And then now I just go Control V. Bam, just like that here is a class with a whole bunch of rules. This is a pretty big sprite, so it's over 5,000 entries. That would have been a pain to type in by hand. So now we have a class called Sonic. We can actually get rid of the box shadow on the canvas since now we have this class to apply. Go back to the HTML and apply it like that. And hey, Sonic is congratulating us on a job well done. We've drawn our first pixel art and you could go and do anything, anything you can find a PNG image of, you can run this tool on it and get some cool, cool uh, pixel art for your CSS. Thanks for watching. Bye. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Bye.